Tonight's debate on France 24, can Iraq be fixed? More than 10 years after the American army toppled Saddam Hussein, the country has elections, political parties, and a functioning news media. But what good is democracy if there's no security? Almost every day brings news of sectarian attacks, most of them carried out by al-Qaeda against Shiite targets. On Sunday, a suicide bomber blew himself up in a Baghdad cafe, killing 38 people, an event that has become almost commonplace in today's Iraq. So can al-Qaeda be defeated? Can the country avoid civil war? Let's find out. On set tonight, William Jordan, former American diplomat in the region. He's joined us. We'll get his regional perspective. You served in Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, and North Africa as well. Uh, it be interesting to hear what you have to say. Abdurrahman Dara Suleiman, Iraqi writer and political analyst, uh, also a representative in Paris of a movement called the Iraqi Democratic Current. Uh, that act, works against sectarianism in Iraq and is in favor of liberal democracy. From Marseille, Miriam Benrad, a researcher at a French political institute, Siri and Sciences Po, simply one of the most knowledgeable experts on communities in Iraq. And from Bergen, Norway, Peter Galbraith, former American ambassador, senior diplomatic fellow at the Center for Arms Control and Non-Proliferation. In 2003, Mr. Galbraith was an advisor to the, uh, when the Iraqi constitution was being written. So he's, uh, he'll have interesting insights on what the country has become 10 years on. He's also written a book called The End of Iraq. All right, first, let's get a sense of what life in Baghdad is like these days. Watch the excerpt from this report, an exclusive report from our reporter in Baghdad filed last week by Anso Filimov. Every day, hundreds of Iraqis face being targeted by religious militias. Many are attacked on the street, or even in their own home, because they either belong to the Sunni or Shiite community. This daily threat of violence has sparked fears the country could be on the verge of a new sectarian war, last seen in 2006 and 2007. At the Baghdad Forensic Institute, bodies arrive by the dozen. The team, led by Dr. Munjid Rezali Al, tries to identify the victims. For this moment, actually, we have four cases, bullet injuries, all are known people. And which one? Most of them, uh, bullets in the head, uh, photos on this. Okay. Abu Jafar was lucky to escape with his life. The taxi driver was carrying passengers when gunmen tried to assassinate him in Baghdad. I'm Shia. I can't live or work in Sunni neighborhoods. I can't even go there. A few weeks ago, something happened to me, and I didn't know what I was meant to do. I was stopped and asked for my ID card. He saw that I was Shiite, and he went straight for his gun. I left the engine running, and I fled. Well, that was an excerpt, but you can watch the full report on our website, france24.com, from that exclusive report, and Sophie Lamof in Baghdad. Let's go straight to Miriam Benrad. Uh, Miriam, what's it like in Baghdad right now? We just got uh, a sense of what, what it can be like. Is it really the war of all against all Sunnis against Shiites? Um, I wouldn't say it's the war of all against, against all. It's not a civil war, um, according to the you know, usual definition that is given of a civil war. It's uh, the attacks are mostly waged uh, by uh, militias and insurgent groups, mostly uh, by the Salafist jihadist trend, uh, and of course, uh, Al Qaeda, the Islamic State of Iraq, uh, which has been active since 2006 and never stopped carrying out, carrying out those uh, attacks that target uh, both the government, the institutions, um, the army, the security forces, and of course civilians, both uh, Shia and, 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 and Sunnah. And the problem is, of course, that this has this atmosphere has created mutual uh, distrust between uh, the Iraqis, uh, which in particular in Baghdad used to live uh, in very peaceful uh, terms uh, prior to uh, the American invasion in 2003. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's a civil war. It's a generalized violence uh, that can uh, target anyone uh, along sectarian lines, but also much beyond the, the, the sole uh, sectarian uh, prison. Can, he, can, he, can a Sunni resident of Baghdad walk across a Shiite neighborhood and vice versa? 
Well, uh, right now, no. Uh, this has been the case uh, already. Uh, this was the case already uh, in the past, um, in particular in 2006, uh, when uh, when Baghdad uh, was clearly divided between uh, sectarian lines. Uh, walls were erected everywhere in the city to uh, uh, isolate uh, the neighborhoods. Uh, the militias and the insurgent groups are again very active, as I said. So uh, again, I mean, the Iraqis are afraid of uh, going from one place to the other. Uh, they're afraid for their lives, and uh, they indeed have the, the feeling that their sectarian identity can be a pretext for some of the groups uh, concerned, some of those militias and insurgent groups to, to target them. Um, but the, again, the civilian population is not part of this uh, war that is waged uh, now. Uh, Miriam, you mentioned insurgent groups. Uh, I understand it's mostly one, and it's mostly Al-Qaeda, extremist Sunni group Al-Qaeda targeting mostly, but not only, Shiites. Well, um, the nationalist groups have tended to rally the political process, uh, especially since the American withdrew from the country, uh, since their, um, main, uh, their main credo was to get rid of the occupation. So now, uh, yes, Al-Qaeda and the Salafist trend uh, dominate uh, the, the, the insurgent landscape with very spectacular attacks that um, consist for the organization to uh, remind everyone of its determination to get rid of any, uh, any kind of political and institutional legacy. Uh, so, in in, um, in particular, the uh, the American legacy that is uh, depicted in their communiques as apostate and illegitimate, uh, and uh, and they target um, a number of, um, of of people, of different people, and 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 symbols. As I said, the government, its representatives, um, either Shia or Sunni or Kurds. Uh, the new security forces, the army, um, a lot of uh, soldiers and policemen were assassinated in recent months. Um, and of course, the, the civilian populations uh, that are the victims that have been for years now the victims of those uh, spectacular, spectacular attacks waged uh, in Baghdad, but also across the country. So you've explained Al-Qaeda wants to essentially bring down uh, the current Iraqi government and therefore attacks government targets as well as civilians, mostly Shiites, it has to be said. Um, Abdurrahman Dara Suleiman, you've been living in France uh, in exile. Uh, you were an opponent to uh, the regime of Saddam Hussein uh, for decades now. Uh, you've, of course, been watching keenly the events in Iraq since 2003, since the American-led invasion. Um, now, th there was a turning point, or what appeared to be a turning point, in, in 2006, 2007. It appeared for a while that uh, al-Qaeda, the uh, al-Qaeda insurgent group, had been defeated. Are you surprised that we're now talking about the resurgence of al-Qaeda in Iraq? In fact, the al-Qaeda is not alone. Al-Qaeda is not today, is not working in darkness. And there are, um, there is an, an twin to al-Qaeda. The second, the second part, the second phase of al-Qaeda in Iraq is the corruption inside the, in the, the political class uh, Iraqi. Al-Qaeda gave its, its uh, support, financial support, and its uh, logistical information from most of the uh, Iraqi uh, government, um, the, from the army, it can reach easily to its tar target. You're it's, saying they have support within the official government structure? Surely. Beside of that, that uh, Al -Qaeda, uh, as you said exactly, Al-Qaeda, however, become weak, we, we, we notice that after six months or eight months or, or one year, it's become more stronger. There are reasons for that. The reason we can watch it and notice it because of the, the, the uh, Iraqi uh, local political conflict. So you're saying Al-Qaeda draws its strength from the weakness of, of the political system? Is that right? Surely. Surely. The, the, the Iraqi system today is a sect, uh, sect, uh, sectarism system. We, 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 we hope in, 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 uh, during the period of Saddam Hussein, during the period of dictatorism, we, have, we hope as Iraqi peoples 
for, for building and construction and democratic, democratic uh, regime. That we would, we don't want uh, to 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 to, uh, to change one dictator uh, by another. That now we have not not real democracy. There is a formal demo, but in, uh, re, for, formal democracy in Iraq. You have all the trappings of democracy. You have you have a multi-party system. You have an opposition. Uh, you have, as I said, news media. You have elections. That, all that's right, but what's the meaning? There are no value for, for we have a constitution or we have an election and nobody respect all this text or all this article of the constitution. Beside of that, the democracy for us as Iraqian, it's not mean only the vote or the, uh, the, the ballots. The democracy for us, it's not a technique. The democracy is a culture. It's not just a process; it's a culture. It's, it's a culture. The we, as well. want, we want to, to build a, a new schools. We want to build uh, hospitals. We want to build an, an institutions uh, to 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 change and culture that 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 remove the the culture of of dictatorism during forty years uh, ago. Okay, hold on. Let me get a reaction to this from William Jordan. Do, do you feel um, Abdul Rahman is essentially telling us that? Uh, the, the criminality, the terrorism in the country, it, it's not just a security problem, it goes hand in hand with, a, with the, the weakness of the political state or the political infrastructure. Do, do you agree with that? From what I understand of the, what's happening in Iraq, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think uh, that uh, what you were seeing is, uh, is a sort of an opportunistic or uh, uh, terrorism campaign that's being driven uh, even even with the ideological pretensions of the you know, al-Qaeda branch in Iraq that's operating. I, I think that it, it, it this is all happening against the very real backdrop of a general breakdown of society and political structures in Iraq, uh, uh, resentment directed against uh, Prime Minister al-Maliki and uh, the people around him. and. And let's not let's not forget that there's also and that you, all you have to do is look at various international reports that talk about the, the the you know how Iraqis are faring today versus how they were faring prior to 2003 in terms of electricity, basic you know basic access to public goods, education, uh, health care, uh, you know in 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 a country where uh, that is oil and gas rich, uh, when you have a hard time keeping the electricity on more than several hours a day because of um, not just terrorist attacks that have taken down the infrastructure, but also a failed political commitment on the part of the government to, to respond to the needs of the people. I think it's inevitable you're going to have a great deal of dissatisfaction and uh, chaos uh, that uh, a group like al-Qaeda is going to take advantage of. Uh, uh, let's get in, uh, bring in Peter Galbraith, who's listening in from Norway. Uh, Mr. Galbraith, you're a former ambassador. You've worked in a number of, of countries that could be considered at, at one point or another to have been failed states. You also, uh, you worked uh, in, you were involved in the process, the political process in Iraq. You worked in Afghanistan. Uh, as far as you're concerned, is this a security issue? In other words, is this just um, uh, an issue of uh, defeating al-Qaeda, or is this to do with building up the Iraqi political infrastructure, as some of our guests have been saying? Well, I see this as a continuation of the Sunni-Shiite uh, civil war that uh, broke out in 2005. It, it went into a quiet phase in uh, 2008, uh, largely because the Sunni sheikhs turned on al-Qaeda. Uh, but their basic demands for uh, full participation in the government were not met by the uh, now, uh, dom now Shiite-dominated government. Uh, and the one major reason that this is uh, reviving, this conflict, is uh, what's going on in Syria, which is also uh, may have started as protests against the government, but it has become a sectarian conflict with a, uh, a, a Sunni, uh, almost entirely Sunni opposition uh, opposing a Alawite or Shiite dominated government in Damascus uh, with the other minorities, the Christians, the Kurds, the Druze, uh, very much on the sidelines. Can politics solve this? In other words, is it just an issue of involving Sunnis more in the political process or not? 
I think the, the problem is, uh, uh, is a two irreconcilable views on the future of, of Iraq and, for that matter, of Syria. Uh, the Shiites believe that it is their country, that they are the majority, that they have suffered uh, the 80 years of the first 80 years of Iraq, uh, as well as the uh, centuries that preceded that. Uh, the Sunnis see this as the country that they created. Uh, and, and they see that there's, they believe there's no space for them. And then there's the Kurds who uh, unanimously just want out. They want to have their own independent state. Uh, and as uh, Iraq falls apart, they move ever closer to having that. Well, perhaps let's bring up the map of the, the, the uh, ethnic or should I say sectarian mix in the country. You'll see that Kurds are based in the north of Iraq, uh, Shiite majority in the uh, southern part of the country, Sunnis in the, uh, in the western part of the country. You're looking at the green part, Anbar province, Saladin province, a Sunni-dominated provinces there. Uh, Al-Qaeda uh, appears to have its base in Anbar province next to the Syrian border. Um, Miriam Benrad, what is the government's answer to the threat of al-Qaeda right now? Do they have, is it just a military answer? Is there any kind of, of plan to deal with al-Qaeda at present? Um, there, is no, um, there is no real uh, security strategy uh, on, on the part of the Iraqi government now. A few months ago, Baghdad announced that they would launch a new security plan uh, along other declarations that were made in the past. There were a number of, again, security measures and plans. Um, but I think it's important to uh, underline that Al-Qaeda is not only uh, an organization, uh, it's not a structured threat. Uh, they have, um, they you know, benefit from networks within the civilian populations, uh, conferences. We've seen that in the case of uh, the riots that took place in some of the prisons uh, with the you know, uh, prisoners affiliated to Al-Qaeda managing to escape. Uh, they've had also uh, conferences within the judiciary. Um, so it's, it's a systemic uh, problem. It has also to do uh, with uh, social violence, um, uh, in the country uh, and, and the fact that the population indeed suffers from uh, very precarious life conditions. Um, the, the level of employment is, uh, is very significant, in particular among the youth, and so of course it provides a lot of uh, recruits to uh, the organization, so it has to be a systemic answer. Uh, I just would like also to... All right, Mar Mariam, let me, let me just stop you there. We're going to have more on this right after the break. I understand what you're saying. Systemic answer. There needs to be an answer, not just on a, on a security level, but also in terms of social and economic living conditions for the people in Iraq. We'll get back to this conversation in just a few minutes, right after this break.